Welcome back to Forsaken. All right, Tolchok Foundry. The Tolchok reactor is approaching meltdown. You must locate several pacifying stabilizer crystals and ferry them one at a time to the atomic core. The survival of this reactor is vital if you ever want to get out of here. Uh huh. I think I remember this mission. Um, it's been a while since I've played this one as well, and I think you, it was one of those like. It's almost like a fetch quest. It is a fetch quest, yeah. So basically, what you have to do is just find, you know, a certain amount of objects, and then you bring them to a main area. What is this? Is there anything here? There is something here, but you can oh, you can access it right away. Nice. Let's see what we got. Money. I mean, none of that really matters. It's like okay, uh, we got some weapon energy, and uh, a thing. What what is this Titan? Ah, oh, cool, a graphics card. No, okay. Remember when like the Titan was like the de facto graphics card? Yeah, I remember being so fucking jealous, and I'm like, oh wait, that card is pretty damn old now. I mean, I know they've probably have Nvidia made like a next generation Titan. I don't know. All I know is they have like the 40 series, 30 series, 50 series. Uh, yeah, the 50 series is pretty much a thing at this point. I don't know if anyone has it. Go look up Linus Tech Tips, he probably has it, but, um, yeah, let's see. So we got some more dudes, of course, as you always shoot guys in shooter games. Um, and it is kind of weird defining this as a first-person shooter, because it is, but it's like 60 OF, so it's... It feels different, even though, you know, it's ultimately not. The only difference is that you're tapping space more often, and occasionally the C key as well to go down. I think I'm the only one who actually configures it to C. Some people like to configure it to either Shift or a Control. Well, Shift would usually be the sprint equivalent, which would obviously mean, um, Nitro in this game. Oh, fuck. Okay, now we got enemies with- I'm not sure if these have actually been introduced earlier, but yeah, the game at some point starts to introduce enemies that basically have your equivalent, like, secondary fires. So, like, just more powerful weapons that you would also have in here. Checking my handy-dandy map, let's see what else we can do here. So that's inaccessible. That is accessible. Uh, I haven't been here. That's good. It's not even on the map fully. Oh, now it is. All right, we got this absolute fucking bullet sprayer right here. Jesus Christ, die. Oh, shit. Okay, that one's weird. It's really annoying when you get hit by it, but it is pretty helpful. So basically, it's called the... I have no... What's it called? Oh, and now the game's not going to tell me. It's like a black hole. It sucks people in. Like, it's super frustrating when you're the one getting sucked into it because you it basically just eliminates the gameplay. It's like, well, I can't do anything for a couple seconds, and that's not fun. It's pretty damn frustrating, actually, but I guess it is good for when, you know, you're the one... You, what is this? This looks like it sticks out. It doesn't, obviously. Uh, I can't access any of the... I just have to bump... Nope. You don't bump into it. Uh, that is inaccessible as well. There's nothing up here. I... Oh, I haven't been here. Okay, I thought I came through here, but no. This is a brand new area with a switch, which I'm assuming is going to open up those doors, right? 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 Oh, oh, got some more dudes. All right, kill the dudes. Obviously, we got the golden power pod still, and we're out of golden power, power pod. So, we're not going to be quite as powerful now. We got the transpulse, which is, uh... Yeah, it's that thing. It bounces... Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> It bounces around, and it looks really cool, but it's really not that useful, I find. I don't know, like, maybe I just suck at using it. Skill issue, as the kids would say these days. Uh, pretending that I'm not, like, one of the kids these days. I mean, like, I'm about a decade younger than most of the YouTubers using that terminology, so... What the hell is- oh, that's the thing I have to bring to the- oh, okay. So now I have to bring that stabilizer crystal to the core. Or whatever it's called. Now watch me fucking die, because I have no shield. Uh, and I'm trying to refrain from using God Mode as much as possible. I will use it, eventually. You know. Uh, just to keep the gameplay going. But, let's see, where we go now? We go this way. Alright, cool. Uh, this is the kind of Let's Play I can imagine is going to be far more frustrating if you're actually familiar with this game, because you already know where to go. And like, yeah, I've played this game, but I don't remember where to go for most of these stages. Let's see, maybe we go down. Yeah, I think this is the path that takes me down to the reactor thingy. Um, the chalk, tor some, god, what are you, toll chalk, that thing, yeah, the toll chalk reactor. So you go in here, and boop, there you go. Core stabilized 20%, security lock on the second level has been deactivated. Cool, and now we can progress. And basically the whole level is just rinse and repeat in this exact way. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I just like doing this, popping up the HUD, because even though I've been a PC guy like my whole life, 
I feel like console games are more like more my home ground if for some reason. It's mainly because all the YouTubers I watched when I was a kid, they would all do console games because that's just more popular in Western culture. You know, PC gaming is more of a European thing as opposed to American thing. So, uh, which is weird because like, you know, don't Americans have computers too? Of course they do. And yet, oh, for fuck's sake, fuck that. Nope, there you go. Did I just... No, okay, good. Jeez, for a second I thought I hit the caps lock key and I stopped recording. Nope, I haven't. Good. Um, but yeah, it seems that PC gaming is more hard. I think it's because it's easier to justify a higher price on a good PC knowing that it can do so much. Oh, that's supposed to hurt me, I forgot. Um, compared to a console, because like, imagine dropping like, what, when this country would be the equivalent to a, like a grand or two grand on a machine that can do the same thing your computer can but not as well you know it's all for like a few exclusives like really are you insane so it's, it's really just a cultural thing i guess but anyway i really like tapping the tab key like that or like just playing wasd because it feels like different and cool i, I guess because you know ever since i discovered the wonderful world of emulation I have pretty much been exclusively playing like the, the console games I never could as a kid, you know, because I just didn't know uh, that that was even a thing you can do. Plus, I doubt my PC would have been able to run most of them. Uh, maybe PS1 and then 64 stuff, definitely, but not anything else, like not anything beyond that, like, you know, PS2, oh, Xbox, forget about it. That thing brings even modern computers to its knees. Like, the, the 360 is actually easier uh, to get working, I mean, like, to emulate on, on modern hardware. Which is really interesting because it's like the more powerful system. But okay, what the hell do I do now? Oh, of course, dumbass. You got the fucking stabilizer crystal. So now what you do is you find a way back to the place where you put the stabilizer crystal inside. So let's see if I can find it. Uh huh. I'm gonna. I'm probably just gonna cut. Yeah, there you go. I found it. It's this yellowish orange kind of piss looking uh, path. And there you go. We're gonna bring one another one of these. There you go. Core stabilized 40%. Uh, security lock on the further level has been deactivated, which means that, well, again, we get more of the level to play through. Yay! I love going back to the same section of level design. Okay, it's not that bad. It is, again, it's a clever way to utilize a small amount of space to then, oh, cool. So we got to actually go through here. I like the, they do, they do the, the valve thing where you have like lights that guide you to where you go. And it's just a pretty general game design approach to begin with. I just realized, even though I'm using god mode, my shield is only at 64. Like, this game, this level is very stingy with the shields. Okay, our shields are back up to 128. Should we do it? Should we... Uh, okay, fine. And... go. Okay. Fuck, 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 go. Oh my... I disable god mode for one second, and I get completely destroyed. Holy shit. Okay. That is hardcore. I mean, <laughs> it's just fuck it. You don't get even a second to breathe. On easy mode, by the way. Alright, I'm not doing that thing that I did in the Vivid Noise episode for the N64 version where I play on the hardest that will... Okay, to be fair, the N64 version doesn't doesn't really have a conventional difficulty select. That game has a, a pretty uh, ahead-of-its-time sort of approach to it where, depending on how quickly you beat the first level, that's what will determine... I gotta go back to the main area now, damn it. That's what will determine... Um, how much you, yeah okay what the fuck am i just supposed to tank the damn that's not good game design i don't appreciate it when games just go yeah sure take some damage that's the only way for really it's the only way forward like there's no other path that allows me to get through i mean i know i can boost but like that's that's still stupid i shouldn't have to fucking tank like that that's not cool at all uh, i mean yeah it's it's very, it's the embodiment of that era of game design, to be fair. I mean, Banjo 2, we have like this section where you have to use like the healing thing that Banjo could do to just tank hits. Like, you get crushed, and that's the only way to progress. You have to just keep getting crushed, and then like hiding in these little areas, and then you heal in those areas. It's just, what the hell? Like, that doesn't, that's just, I feel like they included that ability, realized that the combat in the game is pretty easy, all things considered, you know? And so they were like, ah, oh, shit, okay, we need to justify the inclusion of this thing. I know, make it so you have to take damage so you can then heal. Which, uh, well, 
And maybe I should reconfigure the, uh, the map key to something that isn't so dangerously close to the button that will fucking stop the recording. Nah. I like to live on the edge of tomorrow. Uh, uh, I'm not- just wait until you do a fucking Sonic game. I was thinking of, like, doing Sonic Mania or something for this Let's Play series, but... Mmm... I don't want it to be too gimmicky, because, like... You know... I've done, uh, Shadow the Hedgehog, I've done Sonic 4... That's actually it when it comes to Sonic games, come to think of it, but... Oh, I've done quite a few Sonic games for Vivid Noise. I don't want to lean too heavily on that, even though I am a huge fan. Absolutely massive. Uh... And I can prove it, because when I was a child, everyone thought I was autistic. What's up with that, by the way? This whole- I saw a couple of videos on my feed that was like, Autistic video games, and go figure, the thumbnail is Sonic from- Sonic Adventure 1, specifically, with his jaw, like, stretched a little more than it should be, so I assume it's a, either a mod, or a very carefully chosen screen- uh, screenshot. Um... And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I kinda get it, to be honest. But I also kind of find it weird and slightly insensitive, but... Mm, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't dwell on that too much. I mean, it just so happens that particular, a particular combination of tropes in media appeals to a particular kind of person. And that's totally cool. Where the fuck do I- I found where the fuck to go. Uh, it's right here, actually. Let's see. Oh, we got another thingy. We're gonna have to collect that. I'm still got my sus gun. Shoot the sus at them, of course. What do they mean by sus gun exactly? I know, it's- it's words that sound cool. That's how the late 90s were. You know? It doesn't actually matter if it means anything. It's just like, yeah, that's sci-fi. And fantasy, come to think of it. You know, I highly doubt that the people working on shit like Age of Wonders, like, they really placed, put that much thought into making sure the, the names are etymo etymologically... Is that right? <laughs> They don't really think about the etymology of these words, you know? It's like, oh yeah, it actually comes from ancient Latin, or who gives a shit? Okay, I got the crystal, now I have to go back up. That that kind of annoys me, the fact that you have to go up to then access the lower area. That's a bit of an odd choice. That is what I'm supposed to do, right? Go all the way over here, yep, uh, n no, wait. Oh, have I done a goof? Have I done a stupid? I think I might have been a very dumb boy right now, because this is not the correct area. So now I'm gonna have to, yep, go even higher up, and there's the correct area, you can tell by the yellow. And, core stabilized, 80%, the utter security lock on the first level has been deactivated. Cool, I could just call it the utter one, instead of like, second security lock, security lock A and B, or some shit like that, no, no, just go, the utter one. Fuck it. <laughs> it's great. I love it when game design doesn't take itself too seriously. So I'm guessing this is the first one, th this is the other one, right? It's not? Oh, because there's nothing behind this. Okay, well... Uh, wait, which- what did they say? On the first level. Well... Uh... Oh, wait. When they say first level, what they really mean is that- Yeah. Okay, we're gonna have to figure out how to get down there. Oh, enemies! They're gonna guide us all the way down there. It's really neat how you can actually see the reactor through the glass here. It's like you always have a reference point. Not that it's, like, super useful, but no, wait, I've already been here, haven't I? Yeah, of course I have. The utter lock. That's the one. We got the blue. There you go, cool. Kill this guy, of course. Hope the field of view is good for you guys, by the way. Uh, even though I'm playing in window mode right now, so this field of view feels a little bit weird to me, because typically with a smaller, you know, view window, you would want a lower field of view, but no, nah, I'm keeping it high because I know that I'm going to be blowing this shit up full screen um, for the actual video, because that's what looks best, generally. I can't really stand it when some people put their videos, like, in borders or something. Like, even if it's a full 16 by 9 by 9 output, they still will put stuff around that, and it's just kind of... Mm, especially if it's, like, really garish looking and just not appealing in the slightest. I was actually thinking of doing that, too. I made a custom little, like, background, and I never used it, because I realized that's stupid, don't do that. Uh, but you know, whatever. I got the little crystal. Uh, what could this be for? Uh, I don't know, the freaking. <laughs> what, what, what was the point of that? Was that meant to be something else in development, and they were like, oh shit, okay, well, let's just put the last, uh, core right there. There you go, we're gonna boost our way through. Ooh, fuck, I love the music in this part. Those, uh, intervals. Uh, uh, what's that, a fourth or a fifth? Adam Neely, let me know. Um, I mean, I can find out right now and just pick up my guitar, but I don't want to do that. I actually move it off to the side when I'm recording these so that I don't knock it over. And that's not the f way forward. Alright, let's keep going. 
And yes, I'm going to be in full acknowledgement of the real life aspects of making a Let's Play video because it's more fun that way, you know? Like, that one time NerdCube said that he, uh, he burned soup, which I didn't even know, even know was possible, and he, like, s spilled everything that could be spilled on top of himself in his Toy Box Turbos video. Find the exit, cool. And that was a really good video, too. You know, wait, hold on, hold the fuck up, I'm just realizing something. That is the exact same texture as the stuff that damages you. Why would you do that? That, that feels so counterintuitive, just like, oh, well, we need one more, we need to just make that area more visually interesting. I know, make it look as if it would damage you, and to be fair, I think you're introduced to that section before the damage thing, but that's even more misleading, because it's like, oh, well, so it's safe then, right? No, it's not. Also, just realize, this is actually the intro music, the music that plays, like, at the start of the game. Oh, wait a second, have I... Uh, how does this connect? Okay, I think I might have not picked the best route. Y yeah, no, hold on. All right, so I'm currently in where the hell is the exit mode because the game has pretty much, like I've, fi I've found everything there is to be found on the map, but I'm pretty sure that doesn't actually mean that I've genuinely scoured the entire map. I haven't found any enemies yet, which means that I'm probably not going the right way. Now, part of me feels like maybe the exit is actually, like, really, really close to where the generator actually is. In fact, what if it's this? What if it's this? Oh, that was the exit. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. Tolchok Factory in 19 minutes. That's a personal record of mine. And we got a cheat code, too. NDJ. Okay, cool. I'm not going to bother to type that in. So that was Forsaken Part 5, I think. Um, not sure which level that was in order, but, you know, it's the fifth part of the series, and, yeah, see you guys next time.